Hello, everybody. Welcome to this My Community session that we have today with the UEG Journal and a number of very interesting speakers. My name is Joost Drent. I'm the editor-in-chief of the UEG Journal and come from Nijmegen in the Netherlands. We have entitled this session Cool Solution for Hot GI Information, How to Stay Updated in Gastroenterology. And we are going to provide you some evidence from the social media platform as well as from the journal. So I'm happy to introduce all the speakers today. So let's first go to Gloe Melchior. She's a gastroenterologist currently working in uh, Gothenburg, but originally coming from Rouen in France. Then we have Kasia Pailak, uh, who is a uh, social media editor from the UEG Journal and located in Chechen in Poland. We have uh, Enrique de Madeira, who probably does not need any introduction. He's a gastroenterologist from Alicante, and he's very well known and very well versed in, uh, in the Twitter uh, sphere, I would say. And last but not least, our editor uh, from the UEG journal, Gabriele Capurso, who works in uh, San Raffaella in uh, Milano, but also lives in Rome, Italy. So uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, Kasia, uh, please uh, lead us up to the following uh, note. Thank you so much, Yus, for a kind introduction. And um, uh, now we would like to share with you uh, the movie prepared by Dr. Austin Chang uh, from United States, who is a great influencer on Twitter. And we are very, very honored that he prepared something extra for us. So let's say uh, the school solutions and what the situation looked in 19, uh, 1928 and now how it looks now. Can't wait to be educated on antibiotics. Chapter one, penicillin, the end. Lovely. Uh, uh, oh, how am I gonna keep up with all this? How do I keep up with all these tweets? Where's that tutorial? Where's that YouTube playlist? Um, Alexa, I mean Siri, help me find. So after this uh, really nice uh, video, and I can uh, advise you to, yeah, to take the Austin Chang account if you have Twitter or TikTok to follow him. Uh, we will now move to the first question of the audience. Uh, so to know how uh, currently you stay updated in gastroenterology. So you have four options, or you use a magazine or PubMed or social media or meetings and webinars. So of course you can only choose one uh, answer, uh, but take the one you use the, the most frequently. And waiting for uh, the audience to vote, uh, we will maybe uh, ask uh, our chairman um, to know how they use uh, these uh, tools in their practice. So maybe, yes, you can start <laughs> to look, let us know. Sure. Uh, how I do stay updated in gastroenterology? Well, for me, PubMed is probably the most important uh, thing followed uh, by, uh, by social media. And I have to say, over the last few weeks, months, um, I really got some new stuff from, um, uh, from Twitter, actually, where I didn't use PubMed to, to find the data, but uh, really went through Twitter. And I have to say that also for the UEG journal, uh, Twitter has become a more and more influential source of information, but also a, a good uh, platform to spread our news. And maybe, Kasia, you can also let us know. So uh, to be honest, two years ago, I didn't use social media so much, um, but uh, my friend from Czech Republic, Jan Kral, uh, advised me to, uh, to create a Twitter account. And I always was very skeptical when it, when it comes to even Facebook using. However, uh, you know, uh, now Twitter for me is something the most important. So it's the main source of information. However, I also like old, old school things. So uh, I like to go through magazines. And of course, PubMed is the main source when it comes to finding some, some news when it comes to studies and research. Okay, thank you. So now we will maybe move uh, to the results because uh, we will have a discussion with our panelists uh, later on. So the, it's uh, one third for the last, three last uh, answers. So PubMed, social media, and meeting and webinars, which which is I think a representative of what we can all use. Um, yeah. So maybe we can 
go to our discussion between uh, Gabriel and Enrique? Yeah, I think we can do that uh, because uh, that's why we invited two very influential uh, uh, scientists uh, among us uh, working with the journal and for the journal uh, to see how we should be updated uh, in gas ontology. And I really am happy to introduce them uh, uh, both again. Um, and I would like to uh, give the floor to Enrique de Madeira, and he's going to talk actually to convince us, I hope, that we need to abandon journals. Thank you, Enrique. And that we should move to Twitter for postgraduate uh, education. So uh, let's see uh, how you can convince me. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Well, if you want to look for something specific, for example, I don't know, fluid therapy in acute pancreatitis, you can take PubMed and you can look for fluid therapy in acute pancreatitis in a boring process that will lead you to very specific information and you will learn what you need there. But we are talking about being updated in gastroenterology and there is a, a word in, that has been, a, a, that is in the title of this session that is cool. So to be in general updated and uh, to, be adjet, uh, to be updated in a cool way, you need something more. You cannot every month look at a list of journals to see uh, the, the, the abstracts and to look for something and then to read that. We do not have time and it's a boring process. If you are looking for something special, go for it, for it through PubMed. But to be updated, you need something more. Social media you, is very, very funny. Very, you, you can um, enjoy the information because the information is, in, is given you in an attractive way and you have links in, in, the, in the post to get the articles, to go to the journals, to get, to get more information. But these bits of information, this kind of information that is nice and is cool, is not given currently by the journals. And of course, the journals are on Twitter, are on social media, they are delivering information. The, so, the scientific community, the scientific societies are, are, are making educational bits of information. And this is attractive. Of course, uh, not everything is gold, not everything yellow is gold in social media, but you learn quickly what are the trustful um, sources of information? So it's cool, it's, uh, you get fun, you get information, you can read the papers where more information is given, but this will keep you updated and to go directly to the journals, I think, if we do not have time, it's not so fun. And it, what is important is to learn and to have fun it helps a lot for the learning process, I think. What do you think, Gabriele? Before yeah, Gabriele yes. before yeah. Gabriele comes up, uh, for everyone who has a question, actually, please be sure that you actually uh, give your questions uh, uh, in the Q&A tool, and then we will actually uh, uh, get back to the questions. So that's going to be fine. Uh, Gabriele, please come in. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I know I have to play the part of the one against while uh, you know I use social, so it's not that much true, but I thought about it and um, I think there are several reasons actually that tells me that we really have to be aware of problems of using social. And I, I will come to you with three issues. The, the, the first one is uh, uh, journals could be more democratic than socials for different reasons. What happened yesterday with all Facebook and, and stuff related to Facebook going down, it's an example. So there are private owners uh, controlling somehow or maybe failing somehow to uh, give us information. And this is not democratic. And if science relies on that, I think in a way this is uh, dangerous and we depend on, on a third party, even if we think it's not, that is completely free. We don't, we depend on a third party, which is a private company. 
with, with strong economic interests on many scientific fields, as you know very, very well, including artificial intelligence, for example. So this is a first issue we have to be perfectly aware of. A second one is I use social, and I know I've got, I'm, I'm in my social bubble. When I discuss about football or politics on social, I'm in my bubble. I was completely sure that the man I voted for yesterday in Rome will be the future mayor is not the case because my social bubble votes the same as me. And you are all, and I am here, in a scientific bubble in Twitter. So you only read what your contacts publish. And for young residents and trainees, this is very dangerous because they don't widen their mind and knowledge to different fields. They just read maybe, in my case, on the pancreas with the few people, even if 2,000, whatever, is still few uh, people that publish on that topic. So a second one is be aware of the bubble effect. A third one, and, and Chloe uh, was asking a question about that, is how you control merit, how you control that it's not fake. Okay, if Enrique posts a new paper that came out on New England, I know that it's not fake, but it's very dangerous because it's all so quick. We don't have time. And, and at the end of the day, we saw that with COVID, and maybe uh, a strong message on against the COVID vaccine will go out on social and many people don't have enough time to double check if it's true or not, or maybe it's a misinterpretation of data. And, and you have this um, problem. Journals come through a meritocratic process, peer review, the board, and so on. So it's difficult to go to each journal, as Enrique said, and as the video uh, nicely said, but the socials don't have this control, don't have this control of merit, quality, and you could easily fall into fake. Well, uh, uh, the democrat, you know, the scientific journals, in fact, are private companies also. And sometimes not in the UEG journal, because it's, everything is all right, but in other journals that may be some political issues that make some, for example, if the journal is from the United States, maybe they, the people from the United States have more connections within the journal and can uh, publish easily than other people. I don't know. Uh, this is a, a private uh, company also. But you are right that in the social networks, there are algorithms, but I, I think the algorithm chooses what is more attractive to people. If, the, if there is some science uh, behind this attractive uh, uh, post, maybe it's good because you are receiving very cool information that will enter your brain easily. Uh, that's the game they play, no? Um, and you are right, we live in a scientific bubble, for example, in the world of pancreas, maybe in acute pancreatitis and chronic pancreatitis, you and me, we are very active. There is more information than maybe in, in other diseases. So uh, I think you are right. Uh, there are scientific bubbles and, and you, don't know, uh, you don't know if the information of the post is fake or not, but there is discussion. There is discussion, a lot of people discuss every post if this is a post with high visibility. And there, there is where, where fake, um, fake things uh, become apparent because the people say, well, I'm not quite right with what you are saying because this article, and, and this helps to learn and to detect things that are not uh, uh, well enough or, or false statement or, or wrong statements. I have made wrong statements and I learn from my own mistakes. And I think this is good for the learning process. Okay, uh, Enric, uh, so uh, let's summarize the discussion so far. So you are questioning the independence of, of journals, which sometimes may be really true. And also the voice who brings the message uh, in, on Twitter. Uh, and Gabriele, may, maybe you can go into depth with that. In Twitter, you as a person make a statement and we have to believe you as a person. While uh, uh, if a paper comes into a good journal, then you have some checks and balances and, and controls. So maybe you could uh, uh, comment on that. 
I, I think that uh, the, we should have the right balance. I mean, for example, if a journal has a Twitter account and the journal itself is publishing the best papers or all the papers of that month, commenting them and bringing people to comment the papers, that would be the best. And Enrique, I think it's a question of time because what social do is uh, you, you save time because it's very quick. But as you have to save time, you fall into maybe the first three uh, things you see on the social. And you really don't know if these are the best scientific articles of the month or of the day. So you just look at something. You don't know uh, what you're looking for. You just fall into something. And this is the danger. So I think that journals should seriously work on, on socials to, to bring out science in, in a democratic way. And we should try and help this process because we may all fall into the temptation to, to have more likes uh, on the socials and not to support science. That is completely different. So we should, I think we should be educated and the youngest will be educated to use social in a scientific way. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, the UAG will help this process in the future. Okay, a very interesting comment, but I'd like to go, go back, Enrique, to uh, the, the bubble effect. You also have created a nice little bubble with uh, Enrique uh, uh, adapts, supporters of Enrique, because they liked you, they follow you. Um, so how does this influence uh, uh, you and the people around you? I mean, does this influence what you tweet, how you tweet? Yes, I, I think, um, you know, it, Social networks are engaging and you, you learn how to deliver information to get more likes and more retweets. And this is a kind of addiction. And it takes a lot of time when you are fully committed to this. Uh, when I do um, one of my Twitter threads about pancreatology, I may spend uh, maybe 10 hours with because I do my own um, my own drawings and I look for information, the links, and it's very time consuming. And, and you have to, sometimes you have to think, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? What are you looking for? And well, uh, I think that if you keep it just in the scientific path and you give uh, education and you, uh, if you keep a, uh, very um, in, uh, very clear aims in what you are doing, you can grow in a good way. But there are dangers, of course. Uh, if you, you have to stick to the scientific path, because if you criticize others or the opinion of other people, uh, then you start to have a very bad wheel of destruction and, and, and the path is not clear and you are not uh, going anywhere good. But uh, if you keep the scientific way, you can grow in a good manner and to be useful for the people. But so, it's engaging. Enrique, and it, yeah, so Enrique, to, to summarize that, uh, it's still the person who transmits the message. So, uh, uh, Gabriele, um, so if somebody um, tweets in a very coherent, scientific way and is in your bubble and influences your bubble, this probably is benefiting postgraduate teaching, isn't it? Mm. Yes, I think so. I also agree. I mean, there are many examples. I, I will do a pancreatology example again. I follow Professor Maitra from the US and I'm sure Enrique does too. And it's very good on Twitter because he really looks for important studies coming out, uh, uh, basic science often that you don't find easily on the socials uh, and he communicates in a very scientific manner. So this helped me to look uh, quickly at important studies. So of course it is very important. I would have lost much more time to find them on PubMed, for example, or, or the journals. Um, but we have to be aware of what we are discussing and, and, and you know, it's a, uh, it's a sword with, with uh, double uh, sword. edge, so yeah, yeah, that. we have to, to be aware of that. Yeah. So, so let's enter uh, Kasha, uh, who is our social media editor. Uh, what's your position in this discussion? So I fully agree with uh, with Enrique and 
and also with Gabriela that uh, there's always some risk of, of reading and checking the not maybe appropriate content. So uh, what I do and what is probably the most uh, most important thing is, is sharing the resource that the, from the information is from come from. So you always have to keep in mind to put uh, for example, the, uh, the the link to the website or to the paper or, or whatever thing you will refer you to the to the main resource of this information, and and also um, I think b before we prepare something like for example me uh, the content for UEG Journal or Enrique their uh, his own content, we work uh, so many hours to to post the, the right content to not be confusing and i think twice even it's good to to ask someone who is the expert in that field and and recommend you some information and even check it so so there is a risk but we always should keep the distance to the twitter of course uh, with our own knowledge and also we should check uh, the resources who are posted in in one tweet for example Hey, that's 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 a, that's a very good comment. Chloe, uh, have questions come in from the audience? Yeah, exactly. We have uh, one question. Um, it's not all about social media, but when a young gastroenterologist uh, should select to specialize uh, in a field uh, and then also select what to learn and yeah, what do you think? Well, is it a question for me? I'm not a young gastroenterologist. Maybe uh, Enrique, I value as young enough. So... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, the question is, um, uh, should a young select a deep field to go early? Well, I selected my field when I was in the third year of the medical career, when I was studying, and I, be, I, I felt in love with gastroenterology. And, and, and I made it. Uh, so everybody must to, to select the subspecialization when, when he or she feels that, that something is, is, it, it will pass, it will be, you will be passionate about something. I think astrontology have very nice um, uh, properties a lot of organs to be explored, hepatology, pancreas, diseases, endoscopy, but uh, it's just, uh, there is no a perfect moment for that, is that you can see that something is, will be exciting for you, I think. Mm. Yeah, that's right. I mean, what I uh, see in, in, in practice is that during studies, you are very broad and then you narrow during the specialization, but also when you uh, grow into a speciality, you like to widen up again to see the boundaries of your uh, field and in particular uh, start to see in other specialities whether they will do to solve uh, certain problems. So maybe, Gabriela, you could comment. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, this is also something that has to do with socials and journals, if you wish, or, mm -hmm. or meetings. I think when you are starting the residence uh, program, you are a trainee, first year, second year, you should really be wide. And what why I advise the young people working with me when we go to a huge meeting like DDW or UG Week is to look for big sessions, like, I don't know, better to go to see hepatorenal syndrome or IBD trials and not the pancreas bit. They work with me on the pancreas already. They have to learn more and widen their knowledge. And this is what I meant on the danger of a social bubble. Maybe someone who's working with me will come into my social scientific bubble and lose uh, something on the liver or endoscopy or IBD. <laughs> uh, then after that, I agree at a certain point, you, you go to a specific field and maybe, I don't know, uh, Chloe and Cassia could, could tell us uh, what, how they develop their super specialty. Chloe? Yeah, so I think at the, at the beginning, uh, in France, we learned gastroenterology for five years. So you learn everything. And then, uh, well, yeah, you became a doctor. And I think you are still doing a lot because you are, you are on duty and things like that. So you have to be able to do <laughs> everything. Uh, and then, of course, you have an interest. Yeah, so for me, it was uh, in the GBI. And yeah, with the time you go more and more in this topic. Uh, but I think it's still nice, yeah, 
to keep an eye on what happens in the rest of gastroenterology because it's still your field and yeah, you have to teach the students things and they can ask you a question about your field, but also pancreas or liver and you have to be able to answer to them what they want to know. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chloe, that's, that's a very nice answer. I mean, that's, that's uh, so true, I would say. So maybe you can lead up now to the second question that we actually have for the audience. Yes, of course. Chloe, would you like? Or no, no, it's okay. You can go. And after we have a okay. question from the other, John Spitt, we can do that. Okay. So we are going to the second question to our audience. So please vote. Uh, you can find the window uh, with voting. Sometimes you have to refresh the window to check where is uh, where's the place for voting. But the next question will be um, to our audience. After this session, will you change your practice to stay up to date? And, and how would you like to, to change? Maybe you can also answer uh, in the chat. Yeah, that will be interesting uh, what uh, the votes will be now uh, uh, in. Yeah. I mean, I think we have a, had a good discussion uh, among Enrique and, and Gabriele about the merits, but also about the threats uh, of, of social media. So maybe we can uh, tr try to see the answers uh, coming up. Okay. If... We yeah okay oh. see so maybe you can discuss them yeah <laughs> so, so maybe move, to the question the layer. yeah yeah there is one question about king kardashian will win the nobel prize <laughs> <laughs> can't do anything about that no 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 um I think we become more familiar with with using uh, the social media than than in the past, and this is something what is going uh, to be our maybe daily routine somehow. Tiny piece, of course, and it's very useful, of course, as we said um, before and as we saw yesterday that there will be always a problem. But this is not our main source. This is something extra, something um, some some something additional to our daily uh, practice, which can help us stay stay up to date. Because because there is everything you can find information, for example, from conferences, be, uh, be updated uh, when it comes to even UEG week, you, you can find a lot of posts and tweets about the sessions, the program, everything you can find there. And also about the papers, about the, the even grants, fellowships. So for example, me, I received a lot of information about some fellowships and grant, grants in social media. So I, I didn't even uh, was thinking that I can find uh, some relevant information for myself, but still uh, real world is a real world and we, we should keep the distance, but this is something I think positive and beneficial in our, in our career and daily life. Yeah, hey, I, a... Enrico, sorry. one last word. Hey, sorry, and then, sorry. Then our very, very, as a clinical researcher, I have to say, Gabriele, that this is a bias because the people that are looking at this session maybe like social fiction. media so <laughs> so i think it's biased that's all yeah yeah uh, there is bias everywhere uh, bias <laughs> creeps in all of our decision making so let's uh, actually wrap up the session and i think uh, and to summarize uh, bits and pieces that we have shared among us i think um Social media, as Enrique Atas, is really cool, funny, attractive, and uh, an entry point for your postgraduate studies. Um, it is there in, in, in real life, and it will probably stay with us. Um, and indeed, as you say, it's a new, exciting way of learning. But I think um, Gabriela also asserted that this may be a distraction. And uh, also social media can go down, uh, can go offline, which is uh, very uh, uh, unfortunate if it happens. He also uh, asked us uh, who owns the data. Uh, journals are more democratic than uh, the social media platforms uh, are because they are ruled by uh, a private company. And secondly, um, he warned us to stay in or out of bubble or to be aware of that we are in a bubble. The bubble who voted for the wrong um, uh, uh, mayor candidate uh, for the city of Rome, for example. Um, and also we should be aware that not always all what appears on uh, social media is, is real stuff, but is fake. Kasia added uh, that she, as a social media editor, really adds uh, citation to the journal. So that's really 
give some uh, credentials to the uh, remarks uh, uh, that she makes on uh, on social media. So I thank you uh, all for uh, for having this uh, half hour lunch session, Enrique, Gabriele, Gloé, and uh, Kasia. I think this was a very interesting. I think that the development in the direction of social media is here to stay and that we will continuously uh, improve and develop that and that we should use social media uh, platforms in order to benefit from it and to really add to the professional knowledge that we already have. So with that, I would like to conclude. Uh, one remark, please rate us on uh, the platform uh, uh, if you can. For those who uh, re uh, see this uh, on, uh, on social media or a different uh, platform, uh, thank you for, for watching this. And uh, I wish you all a very nice uh, uh, UG Week Virtual 2021. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you.